Hello everybody, welcome back to the second video on my channel. I am very, very excited to be going through the Holly Jolly Readathon with you guys this weekend. Well, I guess my experience that I had this weekend, I already participated. It is now the Monday after. I completed all of the prompts. I am very excited to share with you guys what I read. Just a minor note slash disclaimer, the audio and video is probably chaos in this video. I got a new camera lens, a new mic, which is what I'm filming on right now. Um, so this part will hopefully be really good and this is the quality video we should have from here on out. However, during the actual vlogging time, still learning things with this new lens and camera setup. Um, so I just filmed on my iPhone. So hopefully that doesn't bother you too much, but from here on out, this is the quality we should be expecting. I'm very, very, very excited to have just nicer quality equipment, especially because I'm really, really hoping to stick around YouTube. I know this is my second video ever, but I just really enjoy talking about books with other people who like to talk about books. So let's get to it. For the Holly Jolly Readathon, there were four prompts to complete. The very first prompt was a book with red or green on the cover. So I chose Beasts in Beauty, Dangerous Tales um, by Soman Chinai. I'm so sorry. I probably definitely butchered how I said that. But this was my very first um, prompt. So it's... I chose this because it just looks very wintry, um, to be honest. There's a little bit of red on the cover, but I've been meaning to read this one in the wintertime. It is an anthology of 12 dangerous tales, fairy tale retail, retellings, so to speak. So I figured an anthology would be one that would probably be pretty easy for me to get through in the span of 72 hours. The second prompt is a Christmas mystery. So originally I had chosen, um, what is this? Mistletoe and Murder by Robin Stevens. This is a murder most unladylike mystery. It is a middle grade and I was excited about this one. However, I changed my mind on reading this because after doing a little bit of research, it is the fifth book in a series. How many times have you guys done that? I do it all the time. And they say you can read them out of order. However, it's best if you read the first one first so that way you get to know the characters. So I think I'm gonna wait to read this one until next year. So instead, I decided to pick up a Cup of Holiday Fear by Ellie Alexander. Um, and this was my first ever cozy mystery, unless you can consider Agatha Christie as um, a cozy mystery, which I feel like I definitely would. This is not gory and graphic, which is perfect for me. I get very nauseous and anxious around um, super gory graphic type of stuff. So this was such a good, clean <laughs> murder mystery, if there is such a thing. The third prompt is a book that reminds you of Christmas time or your childhood or um, something along the lines of that. So this book slash movie I really never watched as a child or read as a child. I knew the initial story. I really love this author. I chose to read The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. So I did cheat a little bit with this one. I had already read the first four chapters out loud to my son and he's he's literally three months old so I figured he would not be upset if I decided to finish the rest of this without him but I really 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 enjoyed this one um I've never read this series and I definitely think this is something that I might try to pick up and go through the rest of throughout this year this was just so sweet and I just I adore C.S. Lewis's writing and I'll explain a little bit more about that through um the actual vlogging experience the last prompt was a Christmas romance and I read a Holiday by Gaslight by Mimi Matthews and 
oh my goodness I just like gushed over this book I really 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 enjoyed it it was a novella it was like 160 170 pages something like that I read that one on Kindle so I don't have the actual copy of it however I really want to get the actual copy of it now and annotate it um, it was very clean romance I oh my goodness I really 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 enjoyed that one that one was definitely um, high up on my list those were the prompts and the books that I chose. Let's get to the actual vlogging experience. Hey guys, so I am currently filming on my phone at the moment. Today has been a little chaotic. Um, I work from home full time, so I've been working all day, but my sweet baby has been super duper fussy all day. I just got him down for a nap and it's like five o'clock in the evening right now. He just would not nap for me. So I'm going to try to let him nap for two hours. During that time, I'm going to try to finish The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. I am on chapter six. It's honestly such a fun little read. So I'm hoping this evening that I can get through this and then get at least halfway through the Beasts and Beauty Dangerous Tales anthology. So we're going to see how this goes. Hoping to finish this by the time um, baby Z wakes up from his nap. So wish me luck. <laughs> halfway through The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis and um, I'm just having so much fun reading this book so far um, but I just wanted to talk about how much I love C.S. Lewis's writing style. I have read Mere Christianity by him earlier this year and uh, that is my only like theological book that he has written that I've read but he's just like so smart and he just has this ability to take these really huge mind-boggling concepts and just make them accessible for people to understand um, and just like seeing him take um, like Christian points of views and things and put it into a children's book and make it understandable as to what's happening is just really really neat but definitely reading through here if you're familiar with um any of the four gospels from the bible um just you can tell where he got a lot of his ideas so i'm just having a really good time even if like you're not a christian um narnia i know is just such a loved book and it just has so many wonderful just lessons also like super funny like I have actually laughed out loud a few times okay. those are just my halfway through thoughts I don't know if I will update again when I finish this book um but if I am able to tonight I definitely will but I'm gonna get back and try to finish this baby is still sleeping so I'm hoping he continues to stay asleep so I can finish but anyway that was just my quick little update I have another quick comment I love how personal C.S. Lewis's storytelling is. He makes comments in his writing like right here. Um, this lasted longer than I could describe even if I wrote pages and pages about it. So I will skip on da da da. So it, it just like really feels like the narrator is telling you personally the story and I just feel like that's super fun and I haven't read too many books where the narrator's voice is making themselves present. It's definitely like a third person story but it almost has a second person feel to it and I just feel like that's fun. Just a super quick check-in. I have to go wake up Zion in like two minutes but I just finished The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Thankfully Zion slept the whole time so I was able to finish Book number one. Oh my goodness, you guys, this story was just so cute. I cannot wait to talk more into detail about it, but definitely we're off to a good start and I really enjoyed that. It 
is like 2 p.m. on Saturday the 16th. Um, so day two of the readathon, and I have not made any updates yet. I believe I'm about 60-65% of the way through Holiday by Gaslight, and I'm really, really enjoying that. Um, <laughs> Don't mind the baby noises in the background, um, but I'm really enjoying that. I really like that it has, um, so it's a holiday romance, but it has perspective from both the woman and the man side of the story. I feel like we do not often get like the man's point of view. So I have just like really been enjoying that. And then I'm also 30% of the way through Beast and Beauty. And I will say, I think it is beautifully written, beautifully illustrated. Um, and like, I knew this would be a retelling of fairy tales that we all know and love. And part of that excited me. But as I've been reading this, I wish we had new fairy tales. I feel like the same fairy tales are just retold and retold and retold, which don't get me wrong, I really enjoy fairy tales in general, but it just made me thinking, like I'm reading through this and I feel like a lot of it is just really predictable retellings. It would be really neat if we had new fairy tales. <laughs> I like the writing to this, but honestly, I feel like it's going to be like a two to three stars. This is not anything groundbreaking. I don't know that I would honestly recommend it. Um, I will say like cover is absolutely stunning and the illustrations throughout are beautiful, but that's just where my thoughts are right now. I'm only a third of the way through, maybe a little over a third of the way. So we'll just see how the rest of this goes. Additional side note about this though. The audio is so good top tier. Love the audio. I feel like the narrator does a very good job. One thing I forgot to mention, I do not like that the author does not use quotations when somebody is speaking. So if it were not for the audio, I would probably be very confused and have a hard time following the different storylines. Here's an example. No need, she says. I'll wait for a prince who has no prince for his kiss. There is no such prince, he promises. Oh, let's see how far my song carries then. So, I don't know, you can just see there's no real quotations. like 7 p.m. now on Saturday and I have officially just finished a holiday by gaslight. Zion and I both took a very much needed two hour nap um, and woke up around six and oh my goodness I loved I loved 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 that novella. This was like the second historical romance that I have ever read. Um, this was a very clean romance, so I really appreciate that. This one took place, like, in the UK, and oh my gosh, there were just so many moments that were just so sweet in this novella. I loved that you got to hear from um, the male's perspective, too, and one thing that I really, really appreciated was there was this like side story going on about just how the main character, her name is Sophie, her dad was just like never content with the things that they had. Um, he's just constantly wanting to get the next best thing for the house, um, constantly wanting to renovate, constantly wanting to upgrade and just it seemed like nothing was ever enough and he had made just poor financial decisions because of trying to keep up with the Joneses, so to speak. And I just feel like that's such an important and good reminder 
for me and for like a lot of people is that there's always going to be something bigger, newer, better out there, but you do not need those things to have a content life. But one of my goals is to not buy a mega ton of books and to just read the things that I already have on my physical shelves because um, I don't know, just the time we live in, I feel could really resonate with the time in this book where all these new features and things were coming out for homes and it was expensive and this family just like wanted to keep renovating and keep renovating and they just like were not content with what they already had. And so I think that really speaks to today too, where there's just constantly an influx of new things coming out every single day, new books being released every single day, and just knowing um, you don't have to keep up with those to be considered in, in with it, you know, like you can be content without keeping up with the Joneses. I am now going to pick this back up. I think I'm going to just stick in um, some earbuds. I have a thing of laundry over here that I need to fold and just a couple other little house things to get done. So I think I'm going to listen to this on audio for a little bit, but my hope is to get this finished by tonight too. So tomorrow I can just focus on the mystery. So there we are. Thank goodness for the Libby app because they had four copies of this available on Kindle. Usually I am 10 out of 10 a physical book person, but since becoming a mom a few months ago, my Kindle has been like my reading lifeline. <laughs> so I am very happy that I have this on here. This will make it easier for me to finish it tonight um, because it's not always convenient to be holding a physical book um, with a baby. So, hey, yay, yay, yay. It is like 7 p.m. and I have not updated updated you guys on the last day of the Holly Jolly Readathon. We've had a very slow, lazy day around here. My husband has been sick for like a week and he's on the mend, which is good. But we've just been very lazy around here. We did not even go to church. Everybody was napping from like 2 o'clock to 4.30, which was nice. Um, but anyway, so today's read is a cozy mystery. And I've started a cup of holiday fear, or it's supposed to be a Christmas mystery. So this is my first cozy mystery that I have ever read. Um, I don't know if you could consider like Agatha Christie cozy mysteries. I feel like I would because it kind of um, has that kind of vibe. Like it's not gory or anything. Um, and I really like Agatha Christie. But I'm about 40% of the way through this and I'm hoping to finish tonight. If not, I will finish it tomorrow morning and give you guys my thoughts. But I just thought that, oh, I just thought that I should update where I was at. Um, and you know, honestly, I'm super proud of myself for reading three, almost four books in one weekend. Um, especially cause going into this, I just did not know how much reading I would actually get done with my baby. Um, and with my husband being sick, I've been taking on a lot of the steps with the baby in the household and, um, all that kind of stuff. My house is kind of a mess from this weekend because my extra time I've been reading, but you know, that's okay. Um, but yeah, I'm just like giving myself a high five for actually like almost completing four books. Okay, baby calls. Okay, you guys, just the camera quality and the sound quality is just so much better. I feel like it's going to be and I'm very excited about that. <laughs> But um, I have my new lens on and my new mic, so I feel like things should look and sound better. I'm trying to have the Christmas tree in the background so I can be way more festive. <laughs> but anyway, it's actually Monday the 18th, and readathon like stopped yesterday night. But I gave myself this morning too because I worked 
full time on Friday and didn't get to start reading, I think, until like four o'clock in the afternoon or something like that. So this morning I finished a cup of holiday fear. This was my first ever um, cozy, cozy murder mystery. And I will say I did enjoy it. I was not surprised with the mystery at the end. I pretty much, it's, I felt like it was pretty easy to figure out who did it, but it was definitely just cozy. It was about like a small town and I could actually see the town that I live in while reading this. I live in a pretty small town. Um, and so that part was just really neat to be able to picture things in my hometown throughout the book. There were a few things that I felt were kind of weird, like the police in this book working on the case were okay with like talking with the owner of the bakery just ab about the case. If this were a real life murder case, the police would not be talking with the bakery owner about the case, even though she was there. Anyway, um, but like the night after the murder in the book, it was just so bizarre. Like all the characters were just so casual about the fact that they literally were in the same building at the same time, at the same event that somebody was murdered. They were just so casual about it. <laughs> and so I like literally after the murder happened, the next couple chapters, I felt like there were just pages and pages and pages just about the bake shop owner and cookies she was baking and things like that. And it was like the murder mystery put like, was put on the back burner <laughs> for a minute, which I just thought was kind of weird. I guess I should have known like this is f from like a bake shop mystery series. So I should have known it was gonna have a lot more like bakery vibes. But honestly, as I was just like reading about all the cookies and the pies and the things she was baking, I was like, I don't care. <laughs> I want to get back to the murder mystery. So part of that was just my own fault. I should have known. It's literally called a bake shop murder and it's supposed to be cozy and have all of those types of vibes throughout it. Um, but yeah, at the end, like I, I figured out who did it pretty early on. Um, the end did like the last couple paragraphs just left me feeling warm and fuzzy. So I did enjoy that. I think I'm going to give this a three star. I don't really have much to compare it to. Um, but yeah, those are just my thoughts. There were just some unrealistic things <laughs> that happened, but at the end of the day, it was fun. And one thing I did appreciate because as I was reading, um, just like while she was baking the cookies and all these things, like there was no recipe in it, but it was very thoroughly in depth. Like I put cup after cup of sugar into the mixing pot and it, I was like, okay, it would be nice if we had the recipe for what she was doing, at least if she's going to go into this much detail. But in the back of the book, the author did put recipes for the cookies and the things that are baked in the book. So that did make me feel a little bit better <laughs> about it. But anyway, those are just like my final overall thoughts about a cup of holiday fear. I did enjoy it. Wasn't like the most groundbreaking murder mystery ever. So I think I'm going to leave on like a three star. Um, if you're super into cozy mysteries, I would say absolutely you would love this. If this is your first cozy mystery, I probably would not recommend it to be your very first one because anyway, all of the things that I've stated before. So there we go. Those are my thoughts on a cup of holiday fear. The Holly Jolly Readathon was my first ever readathon experience. It was definitely a lot of reading to do in one weekend. I tried to make it easier on myself with a cozy mystery, an anthology, a novella, and a middle grade read. And I surprisingly got them all done. So technically on Friday the 15th when it started, I worked all day. I don't think I picked up my first read until like 4 p.m. So I gave myself until this morning on Monday um, to kind of accommodate for all the reading I did not get done. I read four books in under 72 hours and going into this, um, I take care of my three-year-old or three-year-old, oh my goodness, three-month-old baby throughout the day. So I was just not sure how 
how much reading I was actually going to get done this weekend. Um, definitely a little nervous going into trying to do all this reading, take care of the baby, working on Friday and all of that. But I honestly had such a blast and I just made it pretty easy on myself. And I was like, you know what? Like this is my first experience. If I don't even get one whole book read, that's okay. It's about um, the holiday spirit and just, you know, wanting to celebrate Christmas through wintry books. I, I really enjoyed it. I had so much fun. I attended reading sprints on Friday evening with Liv. Poor Kendall was under the weather, so I was really sad she wasn't there, but I hope she's feeling better. Um, so I attended the reading sprints, and then there was a movie night, and I totally missed the movie night because I am, like, so technologically not very savvy. I mean, savvy enough to figure out how to film a YouTube video, but, um, so I ended up missing the, like, live movie night. That is totally okay. I'm not upset about that. I am proud of myself for getting four books read while taking care of the baby. <laughs> final thoughts. I wanted to actually, I don't think I went into depth on my final thoughts of the beasts and beauty. So I, at the end of the day, gave this one a two and a half stars um and not that there is anything wrong with this i just had some personal like anxieties when it came to this book it was so beautifully written the illustrations throughout it like let me find just look how beautiful that is hopefully that focused it's so beautiful um so that was my favorite like the images were beautiful um the writing was beautiful however i am three months postpartum with a baby boy and there were lots of like sad things that happened with children's and baby boys specifically in this so i just don't think it was like the right time for me to read this um like i said they were very beautifully written but at the end of the day i was just like so sad when i finished reading this um so those are just kind of like that is what majorly impacted my final thoughts on this book. Um, I just think it just really made my anxiety go a little crazy, even though these are fairy tales and all completely like fake stories, but still at the end of the day, I was kind of sad. Also just the originality. Some of these just weren't that original in my opinion. So yeah, those are my final thoughts. It was not bad by any means. Very beautifully written, very beautifully illustrated. I enjoyed some of the stories. Some of them I could have done without, but just the anxiety around children and babies and fairy tales. I just should have known. I should have known. It's fairy tales. So anyway, moving on. So this was about 2.5 star. Okay, The Lion, The Witch, and The Wardrobe. I rated this one five stars. I would understand if people um, who read this didn't rate this five stars because I felt like the story did go pretty quickly, but just I adore C.S. Lewis and his writing. I definitely think I gushed about this a lot <laughs> in my actual blog or vlog portion of it, but um, Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe was definitely like a five star for me, and I for sure want to continue this series. Okay, A Cup of Holiday Fear. I think I'm going to land with a three star rating on this one just because it was pretty predictable. There were some things I found unrealistic and some things that I just really didn't care about and I just wanted to move on with the actual mystery in the story. But at the end of the day, it was just a good book to sit down and just enjoy. It wasn't anything too serious and I just, I did enjoy the story. I enjoyed the scenery <laughs> in the story, um, but definitely was not the best book I've ever read in my life. So this was about a three star. And finally, Holiday by Gaslight. That one for sure, five stars. I can see myself rereading re that one every single Christmas time. It was very quick and easy to get through. I love, love, love the Victorian kind of 
vibes <laughs> to it. It was just such a beautiful story and I highlighted so many things in that. It just had me absolutely gushing at certain parts. There were certain like just terminology and um, phrases and words throughout it that I was just like, can we please bring that back to everyday um, vocabulary. <laughs> but anyway, so that one was a five star. If I am going in order from most favorite to least favorite of this, I would say Beast and Beauty um, was my least favorite. Again, it was not bad, but I just you know, I already went through all of it. I do not need to go through it again. Um, so Beast and Beauty, and then A Cup of Holiday Fear was a step above that, and then A Chronicle of Narnia, but I think my favorite, favorite Chronicle of Narnia, The Chronicles of Narnia, but I think my absolute favorite was for sure A Holiday by Gaslight. So that was my whole experience when it came to my first ever readathon. Thank you guys so much for watching through this video, putting up with the camera work and the video work being a little all over the place. From here on out, we should have a lot more consistency when it comes to the filming. I'm still learning, still learning, but you know, I think it will be good and just a casual laid back place to come and have a community where we can just talk about the books and things that we're reading. But again, thank you guys so much for joining. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I feel so weird saying that. Um, but yeah, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much.